Hi everybody and welcome back to Mentor. Great to see you all back. Um, I want to start with just thanking everyone who has been uh, contributing with questions and feedback. It's, it's great. This is why I'm doing this for, for you guys. So uh, keep doing that and uh, I'll try to answer all the questions that you send my way um, to the best of my capabilities in a way. Um, Today I am going to do something slightly different. Um, I'm going to show you a video that was taken quite a while back in the simulator of an engine failure after takeoff. Uh, I'm going to try to narrate it as well to the best of well, what I can. And um, I'm going to start with just explaining a little bit why we do this and uh, why we do it so often in the simulator and so on. So, Engine failure to takeoff is one of the exercises that we drill the most in the simulator. We also do it in initial training during multi-engine training and then once you get in to do your type rating it's uh, one of the reoccurring exercises we do. And then every six months in your recurrent checking it will also be checked that we are able to, um, to perform this particular exercise. Now, the reason for this is not that uh, it's very common with engine failure after takeoff. In fact, most pilots will probably go an entire career without ever having an engine failure on takeoff or an engine failure of any kind. Um, the engines that we are equipped with are extremely reliable, and so engine failures are not a, a, cur a common prom problem at all. But it is one of those um, things that it is critical that if it does happen, we know how to handle the aircraft and we know in what order to do things and how to prioritize things and that's why we keep doing this exercise over and over again. So uh, I'm going to give you a short overview of what you can expect to see in this video and, uh, and then as the video goes along I'll give you some quick hints. So when we start our takeoff roll um, we get up to an airspeed of 80 knots. When we reach 80 knots, the pilot monitoring will call 80 knots, to which the pilot flying will call checked. Uh, this call has two purposes. Um, the first purpose is to make sure that the pilot flying is still alive, still kicking, still there, so it's an incapacitation call. But it's also the divider between the high speed regime and the low speed regime during the takeoff. During the low speed regime, up to 80 knots, we stop for pretty much anything. Uh, any abnormal noise, any master caution warning, anything that makes us feel a bit uh, on the edge would um, enable us to stop the aircraft. And the reason for that basically is that 80 knots is a fairly low speed to uh, reject the takeoff from and we would have, very, we would have quite a lot of runway left. After 80 knots is a different story. After 80 knots we get into what we call the high speed regime. And in the high speed regime, we only reject the takeoff for engine failure, fire, predictive windshield warning, or the aircraft unsafe or unable to fly. So, if we have minor malfunction after 80 knots, we carry that into the air instead, sort it out, take out whatever non normal checklist that we might need, and uh, go back in and land if it's needed. But it is seen as being um, safer to, if you're in a high speed, to take off instead and take care of any problems whilst you're airborne, rather than rejecting the, air, uh, the uh, takeoff and potentially um, ending up in a runway all around. So that's why we have the 80 knots call. The next call uh, that will come is V1, a rotate from pilot monitoring. Uh, V1 is the decision speed. Decision speed is um, the, defined as the highest speed at which you can reject the takeoff and still stay at the runway. It's also the lowest speed from which you can continue a takeoff with one engine and still reach the screen height over the um, takeoff runway threshold. So in this case we will generally introduce the engine failure in the simulator and it should be pointed out that what you will see is a simulator. And we will introduce the engine failure at V1 because that's the speed at which it's most critical. That's the speed where you have both engines running at full power and if you do lose one you get the most yaw momentum coming in. So um, after that 
I'll point out what to look for. The pilot flying will be uh, concentrating on maintaining the runway direction, which uh, he or she will do using rudders. So that's the first and most important job for the pilot flying in that case, is to make sure that the aircraft continues straight ahead and that you rotate. So the pilot flying will be rotating at about two degrees per second. Um, up to around, with an engine failure, around 11 and a half, 12, 12 and a half degrees or so. And it's really important that they do continue the rotation and do not let the nose down. So keep it up to 12 and a half degrees, keep it there, make sure that you get airborne and keep the runway center line going down. Pilot monitoring can only call engine failure or engine fire. They won't call which engine has failed, they will only call those two calls to make sure that the pilot flying is aware of what's going on. So after that, the pilot monitoring will just be cancelling master cautions and warning uh, up to we reach 400 feet radio altitude. The reason that we're not doing anything else than that is below that altitude, the most important thing is just to make sure that the aircraft keeps flying and that we have everything under control. All right. 400 feet, the pilot flying will call for a roll mode, generally heading select, because we tend to just climb straight ahead if we can and also to state the malfunction. Now here comes something that's critical. When pilot flying calls to state malfunction, pilot monitoring will go through the engine indications one by one in a methodical manner to make sure that they are looking at the correct engine and also that they um, find out what's wrong with it. So has it only failed or do we have more serious damage? So in the um, uh, video you're going to see it's going to be the number two engine, the right hand engine that fails and it will have a severe damage to it. So it will have no rotation on N1 and it will also have an EGT exceedance. But the pilot monitoring goes through all the engine parameters and only when he or she has ended up checking the fire panel behind the thrust levers, only then can it go up and give a diagnosis to the pilot flying. So in this case, the pilot monitoring will come back and say that we have an engine severe damage on engine number two. The pilot flying then goes in, make sure that this is sounds reasonable, that it looks reasonable to form what he can see, but he won't go into all of the uh, instruments as detailed as pilot monitoring did. And if he or she agrees, he will then call for the engine failure fire uh, sorry the engine fire severe damage or separation memory items to be performed memory items is something that has to be done quickly and from memory there are very few checklists in our curic reference handbook that contains memory items but where there are memory items it is because these items are crucial to be done quickly uh, in order to uh, contain any failure. A fire would be a good um, example of that, also severe damage. We want to make sure that we cut the fuel to whatever engine that's severely damaged and so on. So the pilot monitoring will then perform memory items. And uh, here there is a small difference between the uh, procedures that we're doing now and the procedures that were done when this movie was made. But I won't go into the details of that. So. We'll continue climbing in this video. Uh, the crew will be executing something called an emergency turn. Uh, it's a procedure that is done if there is obstacles in the direction of um, the center line. So if there are ob obstacles, we turn left or right, or we can turn all the way around, depending on where the obstacles are. But that's what they're doing. Uh, at some point they will reach an altitude that we call minimum flap retraction altitude, which is generally a thousand feet above ground level, but it can be higher than that as well. When the pilots reach that altitude, providing that the memory items are more or less done, the pilot flying will call for bug up, which is a command for the pilot monitoring to start moving the speed bug on the MCP panel to the up speed, which is the flap up speed. This enables the um, flight directors to start pitching the aircraft down um, to accelerate and retract the flaps. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, obviously, oh, the one thing we do before 400 feet of is take the gear up, but uh, you'll see that in the video. 
So once the aircraft is accelerated past the white bug, we'll be able to take the flaps to one, and then once it goes above the one bug, we can take the flaps to up. When the flaps are up and all the leading edge lights are extinguished, the pilot monitoring will call flaps up, no light, to which pilot flying will ask for a new pitch mode, which is level change, and then it will also ask uh, pilot monitoring to select max continuous thrust from the N1 limit page on the FMC. Uh, this is to enable us to it will take off a little bit of thrust from the engines um, so that we're not over running, overheating the remaining engine. Uh, max continuous thrust is the, thrust, the highest thrust level we can keep for a continuous time, as the name suggests. After this, when that's done, the pilot flying can engage the autopilot. Um, we try to get an ATC call in with either a pan-pan call or a mayday call at some point, but it's not prioritized. Uh, we prioritize to fly the aircraft to sort out the problem and then communicate with air traffic control. And as for level of altitude, which is above the MSA, uh, level it off. And once the aircraft is nice, stable, leveled off and in autopilot, the pilot flying will then call for the quick reference handbook checklist to be done. So the QRH checklist for, in this case, engine uh, fire, severe damage or separation. So that's what you'll see. Uh, I'll never narrate it as best as I can. And I hope you enjoyed this short uh, video. Thank you. Here you can see how the EGT now has uh, spiked up to a red line, which means that the engine has failed. And that's a master caution alert as well, and the aircraft is now stable. It veered a little bit to the right, but the pilot flying has it now under control. they have taken the gear up, and the next thing that will happen now is at 400 feet, the pilot monitoring will start assessing the failure. So there we selected heading select. Pilot flying is asking the pilot monitoring to identify the failure, which uh, he is doing here, calling out the individual engine parameters and verifying that there is no fire. He is correctly assessing this as a severe damage, and the pilot flying is asking him to complete the and in fire severe damage and separation memory items. So, start by disconnecting the auto throttle. Here they're doing an emergency turn, so they're turning to the left as they're doing this. And then he's verifying, and this is very important, that both pilots agree that he is reducing thrust on the correct failed engine in this case. Next thing is the engine start levers. Once again, it needs to be confirmed before it's cut off. And the last thing here is to pull the engine, the fire handle for the right hand, number two engine. And that also has to be confirmed. If there would be a fire, he would have turned the fire handle as well, but in this case there's no fire. So, next thing is to be done now is to bug up. Once the aircraft is above, and there we go, 1000 feet AGL, and then accelerate the aircraft and take the flaps up. very important here that they do not descend when they lower the nose but to keep it near zero rate of climb with a slight positive climb while they're accelerating.
Now they've received a clearance to maintain 3,000 feet when reaching and there the speed is enough to uh, retract the flaps to 1. Pilot flying is continuously accelerating the aircraft. And it's now asking to take the flaps up. As soon as the flaps are up now, pilot monitoring will call flaps up no light to which uh, pilot flying will ask for level change and max continuous trust to be selected from the N1 limit page on the FMC and also set on the remaining trust lever. And there we go. Command B engaged.